They say I might as well face the truth But I'm just too long in the tooth So I'm an OAP and we need But I'm not yet quite gone to see I may be over the hill now that I have retired Fading away but I'm not yet expired Wapped out, run down, too old to say One foot in the grave Oh, hello, Jean. No, no, just out the back, putting Victor's spaghetti vongole through the incinerator. <laughs> no, we've tried putting it in the bin. The dustman won't touch it. Not after last Monday's episode with the lobster curry. <laughs> Said it clogged up their crusher for a week. Oh, uh, not the effect it had on me, I can tell you. Oh, hideous, Jean. Ever since he bought this seafood cookery book, every mealtime has been like a Quatermass experiment. <laughs> Clams exploding in the microwave, God knows what. Oh, God. I'm going to stop for it now, don't you worry about that. You won't be trying any more of those comments. <laughs> yes. Anyway, did you get my... Oh, lovely. Well, yes. I should be brave the next time I see you. Thanks very much, Jean. Bye. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! No, Victor, no, I told you. Where did you fish this back out, for goodness sake? I've told you I am having no more of it. We're just going to do a little bit of poached salmon for lunch. Nothing complicated. Nothing is going to smell. That's what you said about the squid and Stilton sauce, and they had half the road up outside looking for a gas leak. <laughs> just leave it alone and go and read your newspaper before I go off my rocker. <sighs> and anyway, you won't be wanting much lunch if you're having your meal with Patrick tonight. Don't remind me. And you're not backing out of it, so don't start that. Now that Pippa and I finally got you to the negotiating table, you can have a nice bottle of wine between you and start behaving like a couple of grown-up human beings for a change. Do you hear me? Look at these socks on inside out. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Went, I do not want to talk about it. I've never been so humiliated all my natural born days. Do you know what happened when we got there? Hmm? Yes, well, I didn't want to talk about it. Bloody Armenian restaurant, the one of them spoke a word of English. Can you believe what, what they did? Margaret, are you asleep? Good, but I don't want to talk about it. Sorry. In any case, whose idea was it to pick an Armenian restaurant in the first place? Yours. Oh, was it? And correct me if I'm wrong, but it was you that rang up and asked for a, a nice intimate little table where two people could be alone together to discuss some personal affairs. I can't remember if I used those words exactly. Well, whatever words you use, one fact remains, doesn't it? The entire staff of management were under the hideous impression that Mr. Meldrew and I were secret lovers. <laughs> Hypothesis so grisly, it fair curdled the blood. Bad enough when they brought us one bowl of soup with two spoons. <laughs> Though, strangely, the full horror of the situation didn't become clear until the next course, when a long, complimentary sausage arrived at the table. <laughs> we were then forced to nibble from each end until our lips met in the middle. 
like Lady in the Tramp. Why didn't you say something? I'm afraid anything we attempted to say was largely academic once the gypsy violinist started serenading us with our median love songs. <laughs> it would have been cruel just to tell him to bugger off. <laughs> so we told him to bugger off. <laughs> There's always something, isn't there? Yes. Although, for maximum embarrassment, it would be hard to top the moment when the waiter came over and in front of the entire restaurant. I can only assume he was attempting to say, do you both love pork? And not as it came out in his mangled English, do you both have sex with pigs? <laughs> we did attempt to leave at that point, not before they'd forced us to pose for some romantic photographs, holding hands across the table. Oh, that's quite sweet, really. Quite sweet? Have you taken leave of your senses? Thirty people in that restaurant tonight think Victor Meldrew and I are sleeping together. <laughs> Six inches of brick wall, that's all that's separating us. <laughs> well, thank God for a couple of days in the country at your brother's place. What time's he expecting us on Friday? He's coming round in the morning for coffee. I said we'd firm up the arrangements then. Shudder to think what dreams I'm going to have tonight. About that sausage. <laughs> Is that the time? I was supposed to be clearing the loft this morning. Or had you forgotten? That few days of disruption to look forward to, have you? What, what the hell's been going on in here? What is it? <laughs> when you washed your face in the dark last night, you opened one of those new little packets of soap in the bathroom cupboard, did you? Yes, why? Wrong. You opened a new little packet of Tesco's toilet flush. <laughs> and it's all over the towel and the face flannel and the pillow and the... Oh, get up. Look what you've done. I'm sorry about that. What are you rushing a boat for anyway, like a bat out of hell? Because it's half past nine, nearly, and they're coming to start the loft conversion at twelve. That cranky couple of yours, the McKendrick brothers, that if they bother to turn up this time... They'll turn up. They're generally very reliable. <laughs> I don't know what you've got against a pair of them anyway. One of them's gone deaf from a pneumatic drill, and the other one has an extremely weird sense of humour. I think he's very funny. You would. <laughs> okay, I've got it. Is that everything then? No more of Ronnie and Milton's Christmas presents up there, are there? I can see. Oh, I wondered where you'd gone to. Remember this? I found in the car boots here. I said I was going to try and get it working again and never got round to it. As usual. Oh, I'd better look lively. They said I could have the morning off, but I don't want to push my luck. Oh, that's good timing. Morning, Mrs. Meldrow. Bit cocky out there today, that's a fact. Yes, you want to go, Stringer? Morning. How are you doing? We're a little bit earlier than we said. Yes, I think we're just about finished up there now. Say again? I think we're just about finished up there now. Right you are. Time to wait for the professionals, eh? <laughs> How are we doing on that lighting sauce? You're nearly there. Or am I going to have to eat a bag of carrots? Coming up any second. Hang on. There may be teardrops ahead. Like one of the night and roses and love and romance. Ah! Oh, shit! Oh, my God! What happened? Oh, what have you done? He just slipped! Oh! Went right through! Oh, God! Can you pull it out or anything? I don't know. I'll, I'll try, but... Oh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> Had you go in that time, didn't I, eh? Hey, should have seen your face. I thought you were going to have a seizure. <laughs> you know, we'll soon have to make a decision on that paintwork. I know. I think we've marked up our choice in that colour chart out there. Oh, right. I put some fresh coffee on, by the way. Where is it? It's in the jug, freshly brewed. Champion. 
You want me to pull you one out while I'm at it? You would. Did you want it white? No, Magnolia, I think, is what we both decided. I'll get that ordered up for you. There you go. It may be a bit full. Very much, that's fine. Ha, 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 ha. Come off, then. You're not going to start barbecuing a sperm wheel or anything today, I trust? You know, I've got plenty to occupy myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. That's about it for today, Mrs. Meldrew. See you same time tomorrow. Yes, right. And I can't believe the happiness I Caught one of those bloody timbers on my head. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a nail sticking out or something. Oh shit! Any better than that? It doesn't even look like real blood. Mrs. Meldrew, I'm not joking this time. I think I need an ambulance. Seriously. Utterly pathetic. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. What's done? I'll go and see if we've got some bandages. Uh, thank you. But you needn't bother. I'll use one of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. That was a good one. You've got to admit. Here. This is the same stuff they use on casualty. It's a place in London. You can write off for it. I don't think that's even remotely funny, Mr. McKendrick. <laughs> I think it's sick. <laughs> Twice in a row, I bet her now. She went white as a sheet. <laughs> 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 Turning into bloody Harry Worth now. What's wrong with you? What's that? I didn't know you'd been to the bank today. I haven't been to the bank. 46, 80 pounds. I've been to the grocer on the corner. And I found this on the floor by the crisp boxes. Why did you hand it in? What? To Dodgy Douglas? Who takes three Smarties out of every tube so that he can make one extra one? <laughs> well, he'd just pocket it for himself, wouldn't he? Well, you going to go to the police with it, then? Oh, well, nobody's going to go in and ask if someone's handed in... <laughs> you can't just keep it. Why not? Well, it might belong to a little old lady, an old age pensioner or something. Oh, there's a receipt. Folded up inside for a meal at the Peking Palace. Oh, anybody who can afford to eat there isn't going to miss 80 pounds. And I'm hanging on to it. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. The pair of you. <laughs> I guess the... the pair of us? In you come. That's the ticket. <laughs> yes. Now. Up you go. Now, aren't you? Yes. Would you nine one? Oh, yeah. Uh, hang on a sec. Yes. How do you spell that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. That's a big help. Thanks. Bye. Would you prefer it if I slept in the spare room tonight? <laughs> Let's get into you since you came back from work tonight. You think? I take it that was them that are ringing back. The Peking Palace. Yes, I told you it'd be easy enough to trace. They just checked the bill against Friday night's table reservations and turned out to be a chap called Croker, apparently. Lives outside town at Cottleswood. I thought I might pop it over to him tomorrow night after going to Sainsbury's. Oh, did you? Fine. Well, it's only right, isn't it? I mean, it's, it is his money. Yes. Well, you'd better get ready for bed. If you want me, I'll be in the bathroom sandpapering my breasts. Oh. <laughs> and the flooring. 
It's not for letting out a coffin, Mr. Meldrew. <laughs> we got most of it down now, then we'll make a start on your rendering. Only I got it wrong for a few hours, so if I nod back. Where are they? And don't say they're not in here because they're <laughs> parked outside. <laughs> yes, you! You bone eyed you <laughs> care about! <laughs> Weeks ago you were supposed to come and finish off my friends, and I am still <laughs> waiting! <laughs> really that bad. <laughs> I don't know how much longer we're going to last, the way things are going. Oh, well, you're here now, and we're in for the night. So let's shut the rest of the world out, shall we? And get you upstairs. Oh, I know what I meant to ask you. When I was on your place yesterday, I didn't drop any money at all, did I? I didn't see any. There we are. Uh, I thought we'd eat about half eight, if that's okay with you. Give you time to settle in, freshen up. You'll never know, Geoffrey, what it feels like to be in a normal house. And a man isn't gonna suddenly start abseiling past your windows, start bollock naked. <laughs> Not a stench of braised octopus drifting over your fence. Look, when we left this afternoon, I think there was some form of geriatric acid house party going on. We got effing and blinding about pelicans. You just have to be there to believe it. Just about had enough of it. What is it supposed to be this time? Massive concussion of some kind? Good. I hope it's not some bloody sense of your head. <laughs>
very kind, Mrs. Mildred. But we've got a van outside. Three up to the yard, mate. You've got to do better than that, I'm afraid. Get out of here! Here, <laughs> one. Oh, yeah. Keeping at it again. Somehow, I don't think she appreciates the humour, Lawrence. See you at nine, Mrs. Mildred. Oh, and be careful with that hatch. We've had to count away the steps with a bag of plaster just until tomorrow, OK? Yes! Goodbye! Is it beer or something? Oh, you could bring me a small campari. in the larder. Who is? Who? Well, who else would be in your brother's larder at this time of night sitting on a bag of potatoes? <laughs> Mr. Mildred. Is this some sort of joke? Well, metaphysically speaking, I suppose. Yes. But the temerity to ask me what I was doing here. <laughs> to be come, I think, to bring in some form of contract killer. <laughs> if they still advertise him in People's Friend. <laughs> if I now get seriously and horribly drunk. mind of their own, when you can't control everything they do, like nice little dumb blondes. Dumb It's only a lump of wood, Margaret, that's all it is. That hasn't stopped you groping and prodding her and sticking your head up her skirt for the last week. <laughs> Have you gone stark raving mad? Yes, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's what happens when you get to my age. You're not fit for anything anymore. Yes. I would think that would just about explain it, wouldn't it? Explain what? Why I've lost my job! When did this happen? Yesterday. Mr. Farmer came in, said they were closing the shop. Business wasn't there anymore, and that was it. Said as from five o'clock yesterday afternoon, we needn't bother coming in anymore. All the flowers that were left over, they were just going to send up the hospital. If that's why you wanted to keep the money. Why didn't you say? Well, I couldn't. I didn't. The thought of what's going to happen to me now, what I'm going to turn into. <laughs> What are you going to turn into? You. <laughs> Struggling to fill up my 
my days of mad cookery recipes and playing with dolls. I was frightened. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what happened to your idea about getting drunk? Yes, right. Well, go and pour us two large ones. If you don't mind, I'll just pop upstairs and see how they've done today. Oh, Victor! If you're opening up that hatch, she says, be careful, because they've just put a bag of blaster inside the... They say I'm not as well face the truth. But I'm just too wrong in the two. I started to deteriorate. And now I've passed my own cell by date. Oh, I am no spring chicken, it's true. I have to pop my teeth into chew. And my old knees have started to knock. I've just got too many miles on the clock. So I'm a wrinkly, crinkly, set in my ways. It's true that my body has seen better days. But give me half a chance and I can still misbehave. One foot in the grave. One foot in the grave. One foot in the grave. They say I might as well face the truth. But I am just too long in the tooth. So I'm an OAB and we be. But I'm not yet quite gone to see. I may be over the hill now that I have retired. Fading away, but I'm not yet expired. Clapped out, run down, too old to say. One foot in the grave. Oh, hello, Jean. No, no, just out the back, putting Victor's spaghetti vongole through the incinerator. <laughs> no, we've tried putting it in the bin. The dustman won't touch it. Not after last Monday's episode with the lobster curry. It said it clogged up their crusher for a week. Oh, uh, not the effect it had on me, I can tell you. Oh, hideous, Jean. Ever since he bought this seafood cookery book, every mealtime has been like a Quatermass experiment. <laughs> Clams exploding in the microwave, God knows what. Oh, God, no. I've got to stop to it now, don't you worry about that. They won't be trying any more. <laughs> anyway, did you get my... Oh, lovely. Well, I should be brave the next time I see you. Thanks very much, Dean. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>